Hey, Professor, do we know everything there is to know about gravity? Hmm, well... Hey, all you scientists out there. I'm hoping that before you answer that question, you'll consider just this. We have known for a long time about gravity. It's a pretty common phenomenon. Something falls, and it falls toward the Earth. Ergo, the Earth must have gravity. It's a pulling gravity. It pulls things toward a mass of body. And that's, what our, that's pretty much what our understanding of gravity has been. When you ask a scientist what causes gravity, they say, well, a planetary body has mass, therefore it creates gravity. Well, that really is not what creates gravity. It just tells us where to find it. Why don't we consider this, though? Let's put a few other planets up in there. And then what happens if, if all we had was pull portion of gravity? That was the only thing that existed. This is what would happen. And you know what? That ain't good. And so obviously there has to be some kind of force that pushes in gravity as well as pull. It's a bipolar force and we don't know anything about that second portion of gravity. Yep, that's about how much we know about gravity. So basically when we look at our own technology and, and where we're at on the technology timeline, we're still in our infancy because we really, really don't know that much. Do you remember Pythagoras? He's the guy many centuries ago that decided the Earth must be round because, voila, all the other planets and the Sun are round. So why shouldn't we be? About a hundred years or so ago, um, some of our scientists came across a notion, correctly I believe, that's, that they uh, have called quantum physics. And basically that's just a big ten dollar word, I think, for um, an understanding of how atoms work on a molecular level, an atomic level. Um, atoms join to form molecules, molecules join to form larger structures, so on and so forth. And I think we all pretty much understand today, because of quantum physics, how chemistry, how chemical reactions take place. It's all about atomic reactions. And um, so our skin, everything that we breathe, the air, everything, the air is full of atoms molecules, water is molecules of atoms working together, planets, stars in the heavens, everything that we know across everything of our known universe works on a quantum level. Now break for a second and realize that for some reason we look upon our gravity as something extraneous to the quantum uh, theory as though it doesn't apply. Uh, somehow quantum physics doesn't apply to um, gravity. Well that's to me, that's just a farce. I think it's time for us to make our Pythagoras move, our Pythagoras uh, objection, and say, wait a minute, everything else in the world, in the universe, works on quantum physics. Gravity must also. It's not a magical thing that somehow happens outside the realm of, of all known things. It has to work within that realm. One thing that happens to young visionaries, and this is what I've noticed by studying history, is that from Faraday on up, uh, young visionaries seem to get shot down by people who are leaders in the field of technology. And, what, you know, it's, it, it's kind of geared to make them feel bad, as though they're somehow chastised for questioning the system, and how dare you come up with something that I didn't think about. Um, yeah, that's the way I kind of see it. That's how I see um, the whole philosophy behind technology and how it, how, it, how it has expanded over the centuries. And today, I think, is no different. You know, I'm not trying to turn the tables here. I'm not trying to say, you know, uh, that scientists who do that should be chastised. I'm just simply saying, hey, 
cut these young people some slack when they come to you with questions don't pretend like you know the answers because you don't um, we know so, we know way less about everything that there is to be known than what the little bitty pieces that we do know let's face it we know one part of gravity which means there could be another part out there the push part for example that we don't know about and we don't know about that one then how many other properties of gravity don't we know about um, it could go on and on and on I want to foster young people with these visions who who want to question uh, why you know why aren't we looking to the quantum possibilities that, that affect with gravity I mean the only thing I know that that um, comes close to a push-pull system like our gravity is magnetism and you know we keep getting thrown down every time someone mentions well why isn't magnetism considered as gravity well the common answer from the scientific community that I seem to see is that well our, our formulas show that it can't possibly be but those formulas are focused on one small property of what they know about gravity and and so I just I'm really calling to the scientific community here not to chastise young people when they have these types of questions or when they have these types of visions. And to you young people who do, don't become, don't feel like, you know, don't stop what you're doing when you've started because the answer is out there and the people, these grumpy old men who are telling you, no, you don't know anything, they are the ones that don't know anything and none of us do and we need someone to go out there and find the answer and you are just as likely to find it as anyone else um, this is what I know from Ed Lee Skalman uh, although I came to this completely in independently I didn't I didn't even know of, about Ed Lee Skalman until just a few days ago but I've I've kinda developed this theory myself over the years in that magnetism consist of tiny subatomic particles that are shooting through the air at speeds close to the s speed of light. Other people believe they might be photons. Uh, they, they are very similar to what some scientists are referring to as neutrinos. Very small particles just shooting through the earth. Neutrinos are, are kind of an answer to the gravity thing and that they believe that they travel simultaneously with antimatter, which gives the push. We don't understand any of this stuff. But one thing that uh, Leeds Gallman observed, and what I agree with, is that the magnet, like you see here in this picture, is just an empty vessel. Its atoms and its molecules are lined up in such a way as to be attractive to those small particles, magnetic particles that flow through them. And it's not a bipole uh, system. It's one. It's really one pole. It's attracted in one direction. Instead of looking at it as poles, look at it as as direction. And you see that um, the particles are entering the north part of the magnet and exiting through the south. And they're coming. Those particles are coming from the Earth's natural magnetic field, not from the magnet itself. That was Lee Skolnan's uh, idea. I think that we're also getting these particles from our sun and other uh, planets and everything that's in our solar system and in fact in our galaxy and we're all pushing, pulling together which is it's keeping uh, the planets apart, keeping them in this, their steady rotation. It's, it's a quantum thing and those small particles are shooting through everything there's no um, real insulation they can pass through anything including the human body and the apple that fell off of Newton's tree as it goes through the atoms of that um, apple and atoms basically are, are really if you blow them up so you can see them theoretically they're huge and the part inside of them are so small the proton makes up like one like thousands of of the space of an entire atom so most of the atom space is empty so these neutrons uh, theoretically are passing through the atom and somehow attracting something in the atom while pushing away the neutrons pushing away the electrons and protons so that they don't damage these items and 
as they pass through at speeds of light they kind of I don't know if it's through fix friction or some magnetic or electrical charge that they they attract the atom inside that apple enough to pull it along its path and its path is from somewhere in outer space to the center of our earth so that would that would account for gravity on a quantum level if not magnetic then somehow neutrino uh, some particle is what accounts for gravity and I think that's where we need to start looking at I think some of our young people are, have got the answers and and I just want to encourage everyone and to make sure that no one gets discouraged when they're looking for these answers because I think that's important it's important for us as a society and it's important for us as a world community to find these answers and I'm standing behind all of you anybody that has questions follow your questions experiment experiment because these this is where we're going to find the answers and if we can determine that it is magnetism and magnetism is on a quantum level then we're going to be able to do great things with electricity and um, that's just the way I see it thanks for watching this video